Hello everyone and welcome back to the ArtOfTrading.net videos. This is Trader Stewie with you here again. I wanted to do a video about um, just uh, what you know, what we, the kind of trades that we did today, um, how we played uh, this rally today on uh, October fifteenth, two thousand and twelve. We played a rally today. Um, coming into today, we were we were short. Um, we were short a stock Akamai. Um, we we were shorted. Uh, we took the position on Friday because the action has been quite weak lately in the market. You know, we've been seeing a lot of uh, green opens that fade and go red. Um, you know, so this to me usually is a sign of a market that's slowly going through. A, you know, a a distribution phase. You know, where the sellers. Uh, you know, usually take control at the end of the day. Buyers come in early in the morning. They give a weak rally. Um, you know, and then at the end of the day, usually with an hour or two left in the session, sellers come in and push the prices down and close red or flat. So we, you know, we we, we took Akamai short into the weekend. We came into Monday. We closed it for about a 20 cents gain. Um, but then, the reason the reason why we closed it and we decided rather than just go you know short rather than just close the shorts and then call it a day well what i did was we closed the short and then we went and then we went aggressively long and i just wanted to go over why we took such a very aggressive stance um on a monday about an hour after the open you know for me i was looking at the charts over the weekend and then you know we were seeing um how the market, uh, the QQQ and the QLD to be more specific, were down about six days in a row. So, you know, this is, it's a very, very rare, it's very rare to ever see the indexes, you know, be down six, seven, eight days in a row. It's it's so rare, it almost never, ever happens. So to see the indexes down eight, you know, seven, eight days in a row like that, you know, it's very, very rare. So whenever that happens, just know that there's an opportunity coming very, very close and it's, and whatever you do, you you know you definitely don't want to be adding shorts when you see like you know an index or or you know like the Qs or the QLD when they're down six seven five six seven days in a row. You don't want to be aggressively short. You, that's the last thing you want to be doing. You know if you're short, you know one position, you know that's fine, but uh, you don't want to be adding at that point. At this point, you're going to be looking for you know either either a, a trap. To trap in short, to trap in, you know, late to the party shorts, where they trap in, where they trap them in, and then they quickly reverse them back up, and that's exactly what happened today. You know, we had a, we had a, the market gapped up in the morning. Uh, it looked like a pretty decent gap up in the morning, and then, and then slowly it started to fade. It started to fade, and actually the the Nasdaq and the S and the S and P 500 actually went red on the session. So. A lot of stocks were acting very weak um, early, early on, in, uh, r shortly after the open. Um, so I decided to cover Akamai, and then right away, as I was telling people in the chat room, right now I'm looking for 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 long positions right now. And here's why. Let me just explain to you why at this point I was looking for long, and I was actually looking to get very aggressively long. You know, it's it's not often you know that I, you know that I take on three longs in 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 ten minutes. That's exactly what we did today. As soon as we covered Akamai, I took three longs in about 10-15 minutes. It's very rare that I get this aggressive, but when you know, whenever I take a position that's usually this aggressive, it usually means that I'm seeing something that's where the risk reward risk reward heavily favors a direction. You know, so in this case, it was longs, and here's why. So you can see here that this is the 60-minute chart of the of the SPY, and this is a 60-minute chart, and you can see this is a a, a potential. I, as I was telling subscribers for a long time now, for a few days now, that uh, I expect the S&P to uh, S&P to be stuck in a range. So, you know, don't don't get too too bullish, and at the same time, don't get too too bearish. You know, just expect the sideways range that's been happening here. Just expect this to to last a little bit longer. You know, a lot of people they think, oh, we're gonna start a bear market. We're gonna start tanking 20% from here. You know, I don't. We don't know that. Or we're gonna go up and start moving to 1600. You know, we don't know that either. You know, but what I do know, right now, you know, there's so much uncertainty with the election coming up. You know, uh, you know, so you cannot really expect too much, too bold of a move. You know, right now, it it it, it just doesn't make sense to expect that right now. You know, it, 
it's just too soon it's too soon I think you know so basically I was expecting this range bound action to stick around the 143 area that 142.7 142.5 area you know I was expecting this area to stick around um, you know for, for a little while at least so what happened today we gapped up and you can see here on a 60 minute chart on the SP on the SPY you can see that we're starting to form now what looked like a bullish falling wedge you know this is where you have you know a correction you know it doesn't come diving south like that you know like a strong correction what it does is it it goes basically it goes it it basically does two steps forward three steps back two steps forward three steps back you know so it's not a very it's not like a you know where it goes one step forward you know three steps back you know it's it's more of a, a controlled profit taking you know a, a very controlled way of selling and to me that kind of kept me bullish so so yeah so we were looking for I was looking for like a sort of a falling wedge type pattern now anybody who knows who follows my work pretty closely you know art of trading my art of trading uh, subscribers or anybody on Twitter who follows my work pretty closely they know that I love to look for falling wedges you know on all time frames you know in this case it's a 60 minute time frame but I usually love to look for falling wedges on many many times just because I, this is for me at least you know if you learn how to if you learn how to spot it and you learn how to you know what to look for this can be one of the most reliable patterns to trade in, in my opinion but there has to be there's a time there's a right time to look for them and there's a wrong time to look for them in my opinion today what happened today was exactly what I love to see in a falling wedge for example when once I spotted the falling wedge here you know we would the price action was around this zone right here okay so ignore this little rally that happened here because this happened after I sent out the email to the to the order trading subscribers we were around in this zone right here I was eyeing this area very very closely and I knew if we were able to see if this if this was if this area right here if we because in the morning the bears tried to break down this area as you can see here by this candle right here this red candle right here you can see how we we gapped up and then we faded but look at this we we held on to the Friday lows so when Friday lows held and we started to it looked like it was trying to reverse you know they tried to bring it down they tried they tried they tried and then they failed you know so it looks 15 20 minutes 30 minutes 40 minutes 45 minutes an hour into the, today's session they tried over and over again and then they weren't able to bring it down so right away I switched my bias from short Akamai covered it for 20 cents gain and then quickly flipped into longs so my first long today was it was QLD um, so like I said you know the full bullish falling wedge held support here but more importantly more than just holding support and a falling wedge what I wanted to see was a higher low on the on here on the RSI which is exactly what we did here what we saw here see that so as price made a low here which corresponds which corresponds with a low here on the RSI it make it gave us a weak bounce which faded but look at this as price broke down to create a, a lower low on the price we made a higher low on the RSI we made a higher low on the MACD see that here guys so we made a high we made a low here on the MACD we came back up a little bit and then we made a higher low on the MACD as price was making a lower low and once again here I, I did a video on this topic on it using the stochastics we made a low here on the stochastics a weak rally that comes back down and then creates a higher low on the stochastics as price makes a low a, a lower low R, a, a stochastics MACD and RSI so all three momentum indicators gave you a higher low as price made a lower low so this to me was a bullish divergence which which confirms this bullish falling wedge so now this falling wedge all of a sudden has a lot more credibility see that because now the momentum indicators they're telling you that the downside push is not very aggressive it's not a very aggressive downside push yeah yes we did break down through last through last week's support yeah we did do that here on this candle but look at that we quickly reclaimed it you see that and then we rallied up here a little bit we tried to break down it failed 
That failure of a breakdown here created a higher low on the RSI, the MACD, and the stochastics. So all three momentum indicators did not confirm this drop on the on the SPY. So right away, you got to switch your stance to to long now, because as soon as this, as soon as we get a breakout here from this from this um, downtrend line from the from the falling wedge downtrend line, if we get a breakout from here, buyers are gonna price step in. People who are aggressively short are probably gonna have to cover, and then that's gonna feed onto itself and then give you a create a rally. So right away, I looked at the Apple chart. This was a, a, a 30 minute Apple chart, which I emailed to uh, Arbitrain members as well too. I emailed it right when Apple was around this area here on the 625 area. I told everybody to please watch this Apple chart very carefully because once again here guys look at this we see a 30 minute chart we see a bullish falling wedge pattern look at that you see that see it's uh, this is a 30 minute chart and you can see here we we have a a, a downtrend line here followed by a connection of the lows here creating a a falling wedge a bullish falling wedge pattern and you can see here the the uh, the CCI is making higher lows over the last few days actually over the last two weeks almost making pretty much higher lows with every decline apple makes the cci has been making higher lows so that's creating a, a divergence right there a positive divergence on uh, right there on its own now couple that with the stochastics and the macd which is a which gave you a beautiful buy signal here on the macd because you can see here when this when apple sold off aggressively here macd sold off ag aggressively as well too However, look at this, guys. Apple did a, it, we did a low here at 623 area. We rallied about 10 points, 12 points, came back down, retested the 623, and then hovered around the 623 area. So we almost, do, almost did like a triple bottom. So this was the email. This was the chart I emailed to auto training member subscribers, telling them that be be on the lookout for a triple bottom near the 623 to 625 area on Apple, because if this bottom holds watch out watch out above apple is going to start to make a move on the upside so momentum indicators confirmed the move as it was hovering here near lows the macd the stochastics and the cci all three indicators gave me a buy signal so right away instead of buying apple i didn't want to be stock specific we went with qld and as you can see here guys qld was down one Two, three, four, five, six, and at some at one point today it was red, so it was down about seven days in a row. And you can see here it gapped up on this candle, you know, it made a, 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 and it sold off. It held the lows, and that's the most important point, guys. It held the lows.